has the Rosetta Stone, we have the 1936 EL. Now this is an example of one of those bikes that was saved by the company right from the assembly line. This bike was never in private ownership. You notice it's unrestored. Um, if you were hard pressed to find the few unrestored knuckleheads anywhere in the world, this is one of them. This is a foundational bike for Harley Davidson. This was the game changer. The American competitors never really came out with its equivalent. Um, the engine architecture really remains with us today in the Milwaukee 8 engine. Um, you'll, anybody who even has their just even dipping their toes into the waters of Harley history, they're going to know. Had Harley not built this bike, it might have been play out very differently for Harley Davidson. Uh, the engine was all new, the frame was all new, the transmission was all new. Um, it's a period of this beautiful Art Deco paint that they did. Yeah, yeah and it's um, gorgeous. Yeah. And this was the first major model to, to use the uh, use the knucklehead engine? Yeah. After the knucklehead, a lot of the architecture remains, but then the things like the heads change. So you've got the pan head and the shuffle head. And other things change, of course, too. Then you get into the modern era and you've got things like electronic, electronic uh, fuel injection and better oil circulation. So that architecture remains, but it's with all of the things that you need with you know modern technology. Gotcha, now here's a question for you. I look down here and I go, my God, I would think this is a bike pedal. Is this like a standard kickstart? That's the getting into the era of the kickstart as we know it, which was pre predated by what they call a step start. But wow. um, that's your starter mechanism. Um, so the other thing about this bike and uh, is it's a big gamble for the company. And this is the really the throes of the Great Depression and all kinds of funding is getting cut and we've got the board of directors meeting minutes back in the archives and bill harley is heading up product development he's coming to meetings with new ideas and they're shooting them down and taking away funding this is one of the few things from the 1930s that made its way to the market um, and it ends up not only saving the company but defining its future and you can tell i mean there's still a lot in the styling of this bike that you'll see for the next 20 30 40 years i mean in a heritage, you see a little bit of the elements. Well, here. that was the intention when the soft tails came out in 1984, and then they got their biggest redesign probably in 2018, retaining that look of the um, the straight line from the frame, from the head of the frame down to the rear hub, um, and with that soft tail redesign, they even wanted to retain that look of that horseshoe oil tank, which are now side covers because the oil tank got relocated, but. Harley riders want that look retained. They love the advancements in the technology, but please let's keep it a Harley. Let's make it look make keep it, look it like old a school. Yeah, and just the colors of that period, the '33 with that red and black. I mean, and that was just one of the options from that year. Anywhere you go and you see a '33 in different colors, you're always going to stop and just take it in. I'm thinking white walls. Where's the white walls? <laughs> Not a thing in those days for Harley, so. Have you subscribed to Triple Two Wheels yet? Hey, what are you waiting for? Do it now.